the brand new G.I. Joe Classified rock and roll figure. This guy is probably going to be my favorite out of this wave just because I always liked rock and roll quite a bit. And they did what I like about the classified line. They don't do this with all the figures, but they took the classic styling and gave it a nice modern update. Let's break them open and check them out. These figures aren't due to be released in the U.S. until sometime, I think, in September. Uh, BBTS just got in a shipment of rock and roll figures, and I just got my uh, charge notification from EED for the rock and roll figure. So they're not all coming in at once. We have rock and roll that is uh, apparently here before the rest. And in the background of the artwork on the box cover, you see a space shuttle complex back here, which... Uh, could be seen as like either the, the Defiant Complex or um, the Crusader Space Shuttle. But the artwork on the boxes has changed. You have a completely different format that shows the figure posed and the accessories with a piece of artwork. G.I. Joe Classified series with the star logo down here. Craig Rock and Roll McConnell. Uh, let's see, bottom of the box, uh, plastic free packaging in five different languages, as if we didn't know that it was plastic free. You have a QR code here on the side of the box. I believe that takes you to the GI Joe website, which is in desperate need of some updating. And you have the little piece of artwork here. He is number 71. You have all the little keys down here that I don't think anyone knows what they mean. Little uh, sigils. Uh, on the back of the box, you have the figure with the accessories and over here you have a detail of some of the paint apps the tattoos on one of his arms and i'm not sure exactly what this is really supposed to be showing other than the crossed ammo belts and the backpack hole on his back if you notice this sticker here uh this figure as well as the rest in this wave i went ahead and got these from china so that i could do a video on them uh here on the spine of the box uh, they have put the artwork on the same side as the figure number, which they had not previously done. Uh, so for those who collect the boxes or collect the figures in box, that's going to be a, a nice little treat for you. If, uh, if Hasbro decides to go back to window boxes, that could totally change everything. Now, they could, they could use this box format and make it a window box by just putting the plastic window right here where you see the uh, the figure. And this does appear to be a digital render of the figure. I don't think this is an actual photo. But um, that's one way that they could uh, make a change to these existing boxes just so that we don't end up with a third different type of box for these figures. Just put a window right here so that you see the figure like this. I think that would work out perfectly fine. Also, something uh, a little bit new that they're doing here in the cardboard tray, you see they have a uh, black and white piece of artwork here of the figure or of the character. Uh, so we have all of that. Plus, we have the Foot Locker with uh, Rock and Roll's name, number 71. The G.I. Joe logo, it would fit in the box right here. And the figure tray goes right next to it, like so. But yeah, I think that they could make a window box with these pretty easy. This might be what we end up with in the near future. Let's get into the accessories first. The first, uh, let's get in... Let's get into Rock and Roll's accessories. The first thing that I notice is that they have included a piece of cardboard for stabilization on his machine gun. That's great. I'm really happy to see that. So this gun doesn't end up being a warped, flimsy piece of junk. I think it's also a, a stiffer material than what we're uh, seeing with some of these other figures. So cutting the tape. Let me go ahead and try to pop this off there. It's actually the front sight post goes up through that piece of cardboard for stabilization. And then you have the bipod legs that fold out here. That's a pretty cool little uh, feature. 
What do we have here on the side? It appears as though this is where the ammo, ammo box goes. So you have an ammo box here that will plug in. Hey, it's even keyed. Check that out. It's keyed to fit into the side of the machine gun. Not the tightest fit, but you also have a little short ammo belt that'll plug down in here. Actually, it just goes all the way through the uh, rifle, like so. It'll feed through, and you know what? They really did put a lot of detail into this. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. This looks really, really good. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. So you also have the extended ammo belt. Uh, I like the fact that they've added paint apps to this. It's not just one solid color and everything fits together really well. So here you have the ammo belt going through the machine gun. He also comes with a radio, uh, very, very soft, uh, rubbery plastic. Not a fan of that, but the machine gun well, I guess they just did a good job of keeping it straight because it doesn't, uh, it's not all warped to shit like some of the others are, but it's still very, uh, very flexible. Is the pistol the same? Yes, it is. So they're using a different type of material for these. The helmet, the helmet needs flex so that it fits on the figure properly. And then you have the metal hand here and i'm glad they actually did that right i was so afraid they were going to do the whatever shit that is but um the tattoo on the back of the hand the skull face tattoo really dig that i think it's a cool feature then you have the fist hand here as well so let's move on to the figure rock and rolls ammo belts appear to be fused here and here so these are not just going to come off it's not like you can unwrap them and use them in the machine gun that would have been a really cool feature i like the way the shirt looks the uh, the green and tan it's more of a i don't know what color that would really be it's not off white necessarily it's more of a a very light khaki tan the Let's see, more ammo belts on his wrists. This would actually come off if you were to pull the hand off. Let's do that real quick. Oh, hey, before we move on, I just want to point out that the elbow joints on this figure match the skin tone really well, so you don't have that terrible looking color differentiation. I'm gonna pull this guy back here. If you get this off, then you can get, oh, this is also, uh, this hand also has the, uh, the skull face tattoo which you should be able to move all the way up to his face but uh you get the full view of the tattoos on his arm here let's see if we can get a close-up of what all he has i dig it i think it looks pretty cool on the figure it's more of uh what your stereotypical metalhead would you know tattooed metalhead whatever what is this mom <laughs> fun uh very classic style tattoo. So we are going to put the uh, the metal hand here back on uh, rock and roll. And these actually feel really good. Uh, they're pliable enough to be usable, but they're not flimsy enough that they feel like they're going to break or something or tear apart. Um, there seems to be kind of a fine line between being so stiff that they break and uh, so flimsy that they tear. And I haven't had any of those issues with a G.I. Joe, but I've seen where other people have had problems with uh, trying to take them apart and whatnot, and the plastic just tearing. I don't really take my figures apart. So the helmet fits on the head really, really well. Uh, kind of a throwback to Full Metal Jacket, I think. Hang tin on his helmet instead of the, uh, the peace sign. And it looks like my phone got a little bit warm and the light kicked off. But you can still see the uh, the figure and his features here. I want to show you there is a spot here on the web belt. Uh, that, I believe, is where... Where is this going to plug in? Okay, there's a spot here and a spot over here on the side. I believe these will be interchangeable, but that ammo can, that ammo box will go right there. And the radio 
back here on his hip. And those plug right in. So the, uh, the soft, pliable plastic actually works out really well for uh, the features here in this figure. If this was stiff, it wouldn't fit correctly because of the torso. I know some would say that's a design feature that should be addressed in other ways, but it works. And you have the pistol. Let's take a close up look at that. I actually like the fact that the uh, the web gear is a softer material, makes it easier to move around if need be. Over here you have, I'm assuming that's like an IFAC or something. Uh, ammo belt, let's see, I don't think that actually goes on the figure. It would just go onto the, uh, the machine gun, which this hand here, nice and pliable to the point of being workable and joints aren't super stiff or anything, so that's good. All around a great looking figure. This this is probably my favorite out of this wave. Just to kind of show what I was talking about with a window box display here. Uh, this is how everything could be set up with this existing box. All they would have to do would be put a clear piece of plastic over the front to kind of help prevent figures from being stolen. A friend of mine actually just got a figure uh, from a store yesterday. And the fig when he got home and opened it up, the figure had been stolen and replaced with uh, something heavy enough to kind of match the figure. Uh, basically, people are buying them and taking the figures out, then returning the empty boxes with, uh, not necessarily empty, but uh, returning the boxes with something other than the figure inside. It's a, a really shitty practice, and uh, I do not support thievery or tricking other collectors and that's exactly what they're doing but i think that this turned out really well uh, just for the quick hack job that i did with a exacto knife um, this hell man i'd love it if they went back to window boxes using these that would be great they've got hang tabs and everything else